What up, everybody? This Pride Fed, my mood, representing all the cast offs worldwide. Y'all don't know what a cast off is. A cast off is being who you are, even when it's unpopular, when your thoughts and what you stand for is different in the crowd. You are a cast off. I appreciate everybody for uh, who tuning in. I'm on two phones. This is Instagram. This is Facebook. I didn't go on YouTube live today, but I got a lot to talk about today, and I'm going to get straight to it. But like I always say, man, we ain't got to like each other. We don't have to deal with each other. We don't have to get along, but we do have to respect each other. If we lead with love and respect, the world will be a way better place. Not leading with our money. Not lead with Bible scriptures. Not lead with our authority, but lead with love and respect. And if we just respect each other's opinion, even if we disagree, we could be disres- we could be we could respectfully disagree. You feel me? And so if we respect the rules and the protocol to in the environment we going in, or just be respectful to people, bro. The world will be a way better place. And I believe good manners should be taught in school, even being respectful, because I believe um, a good attitude will take us way further in life than a good grade point average of what we know. And so it ain't about so much like you just being a super positive person. But if you just be a respectful person, respect the person time, man, you don't know a lot of doors could be open. But let me get straight to the point. So yesterday I made this video about Kendrick Lamar fans. It was it was obviously uh it was obviously me playing. I was joking. Uh so I had made a video yesterday. I was talking about uh I said Kendrick Lamar could put a microphone to his ass and fart. And his fans will find a way to break it down like, man, ooh, you gotta dig a little deeper. Boy, he said a triple entendre and all that. Because I know fans of Kendrick Lamar who do that. I heard Kendrick Lamar on the song go, vroom, vroom, vroom. And the guy really was like, see, it wasn't just a motorcycle vroom. He was saying this because that's how fast we had to run from our slaveholders back before it was a motorcycle. I said, bro, come on, bro, man. It was a motorcycle sound. And so I was really talking about that and made a joke out of it. Boy, I got attacked every which way possible. They start striking my page. I said, you know what, man? Let me take this video down, bro. Because I was like, I can't get my page struck down. And I don't want to go back and forth arguing. They like, oh, he better than Drake. They're getting into Drake and Kendrick Lamar argument. I said, man, I don't care about Drake or Kendrick Lamar, bro. I was, it was actually a joke. I was just playing around. But you know what, man? I left it alone. I said, you know what? I don't ever want to be a person who make a joke and it's offensive to people. Because that's being disrespectful. And I said, Kendrick Lamar fans is feeling disrespected. Let me just take this bullshit down. But on the other hand, I believe... We got to quit idolizing and quit idolizing and worshiping people, man. A person could be talented. You could respect their gifts and love them for what they do. But the moment we idolize and we rather we read like I think we do that with preachers too much, too, man. Like, like just idolize people, man. We put people over God. And so I think that is so detrimental for real. And so, um. That's just my thoughts of that, man. And so I know y'all seen that video because it damn near it went viral. I posted a video on Instagram in less than an hour. It had like 70,000 views for real. And so, yeah, I think when we idolize people, bro, we put them in the place of God, right? And that person could piss in our face and tell us it's raining. And then when that person might have a mishap in life, we tore down. I can't believe they did that. Why you can't believe they did that, bro? They're a flawed human being, just like all of us. But we put people on these pedestals that we think they can't do nothing wrong, like they walk on water. That's why when people come out with allegations against T.D. Jakes, man, I don't give a fuck. I still listen to a sermon because I know he's a man. If he fucking a boy... I don't give a fuck. I don't. He's not my God. He's not my God. He's a human being. And I think as I'm looking at this Drake and Kendrick Lamar stuff, it's somebody who will kill you about Drake. It's somebody who will murder you about Kendrick Lamar. Like two people who won't even speak to you in real life. Like for real. Like I don't care about that stuff. If You know what would impress me with the rap beef? If Kendrick Lamar went to Compton. 
found 10 rappers. You ain't got to sign them or nothing. Be like, they from Compton. They dope. I'm going to jump on y'all songs and help y'all career. That would be dope to me, bro. Like, that would be, that would impress me, bro. That would impress me. Because we sit there and idolize these people because they talk black. They talk black, live white, and think green. I guarantee you he ain't got one nigga neighbor. I don't see none of them wearing black-owned clothing lines. I don't see none of them going to black-owned stores and saying, you know you know what, check out this black-owned store and helping their community. I don't see none of that, bro. So y'all can miss me with all this idolizing and hero worshiping these people because they're talented, bro. And ain't going to do nothing for you or their community. And so, man, but like, um, but... I never want to be that person, like, having somebody to butter my joke and a person offended by it. And so, yeah, I, I took that shit down. Even though it was going viral, I took it down, man. I'm not about to argue with y'all over no Kendrick Lamar and Drake. I'm not about to argue about no other man, for real. But, man, but I learned a lot, man. Like, I understand when a kid idolizes a person. And it might not be a bad thing when a kid idolizes a person because they're really not idolizing that person. They're idolizing what they gifted at, right? And so if you a kid and you look up to Steph Curry, that might convince you to go to the gym and shoot 500 shots because you heard Steph Curry shoot 500 shots. And that might help you start varsity. That might help you get to college. That might help you get to the NBA just because you admire this person but when y'all grown niggas want to argue about Kendrick Lamar like for real like like y'all are you serious you fucking 40 bro ready to fight me over somebody who ain't gonna give you the time of day or unlame yourself bro like damn I don't care I don't barely even listen to rap I was like goodness gracious it ain't that serious Man, I couldn't believe how per I unfollowed you. <laughs> Your third eye ain't open, King. That's why you don't. Man, I, man, go on with that bullshit, bro. Goodness gracious, man. <sighs> you know one thing I learned, bro. One thing I learned, man, about this culture, for real. I can't even say it's black culture, because I see white people do this shit, too. We love to see black men get tore down. We love it. We love it. We love it. And it seems like with the Drake and Kendrick Lamar whole thing, they are saying and doing anything to kill each other career. Like, the shit they saying about each other, for real. It ain't got nothing to do with who better rapping or nothing like that. Man, them guys are really trying to tear down each other career. Now, just imagine that shit work and this guy lose everything and go to the slums like that. I wonder would the other guys celebrate that shit and clap. I wonder would y'all celebrate that and clap. It's like we love to see niggas tear niggas down. Are we not entertained? We love it. 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 Like 1090 J, right? 1090 J just bragged about making a million dollars off exposing rappers. He made a million dollars off exposing rappers. If y'all don't know who 1090 J is, 1090 J is this white guy who's a YouTuber. He used to rap, but it didn't go nowhere. So now he make a living off of going to rappers and going in their background, black rappers, because he don't expose white rappers. He make a living off searching a black rapper background and see that he tell on anybody or he did anything wrong and he push it to the internet sit back and watch the rapper whole fan base turn on him and everybody turn on him and he sit back and get rich off of it so you tell me a guy who not even from our community put out stuff that a tear down this guy from this community made it out of the slums Worked hard, made it successful in his field to have some guy sit on the internet, nitpick your life, study your life, only to tear you down publicly and get rich off of it. And so now another black man is to the slums and you turn people against each other, fighting and killing might break out while some punk ass boy just sit back and monetized off of it. Are y'all not entertained, bro? That's entertaining to y'all. Y'all don't see nothing wrong with that. That remind me of slave holders, bro. 
that remind me of slaveholders because the history books that I read about slavery, even in Africa, how it was tribes beefing with each other, but they didn't have guns. So the European slaveholders would give one tribe guns and conquer this tribe, take the losers, sell them to the slaveholders for guns. And now we we'll take these slaves, not even slaves, these Africans to America, bro. And break them in and divide them. It was a slaveholder by the name of Willie Lynch. I know y'all tired of hearing me tearing about this story. But he used the vice of tactics to, get, to control the slaves. Turn the light against the dark field against the house. North side of the plantation against the south side of the plantation. Turn the men against the women. The young against the old. And if you apply these tactics right, make them divide each other. Make them self-hate each other. Make them hate their nappy here. Black nose. Big nose. Blah, 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 blah. It goes on and on. And if you apply these right, you control their mind thousands of years. Right? And look at us now. So divided and self-hate. So you tell me a guy who not from our culture could infiltrate our culture, put out news on this rapper and turn all his black fans against him. Watch everybody go crash out, sit back and monetize off of y'all can't tell me they ain't the same tactics. Y'all can't tell me they ain't the same tactic. Are y'all not entertained? Y'all entertained by that shit, bro. Dead serious. And so we sit back. And watch two of the biggest rappers in rap history calling each other horrific names, throwing out horrific accusations, crimes for real. And we sit back and eat popcorn as other like insult each other, trying to kill each other's career. Instead of them two successful black men go to their neighborhood. What if Kendrick Lamar just go to Compton, bro? You tell me it ain't no good rappers in Compton, bro. And be like, you know what? I'm going to take the top 20 rap. Fuck the top 20. Just give me five. I'm going to find five rappers in my neighborhood who dope. And I'm going to jump on their song and, and get them a, a life-changing opportunity. And then I'm going to go to five businesses in Compton. And I'm going to shop at their businesses on Instagram. And you know their business is going to take off. Because the way I seen y'all dick ride that man, if he tell y'all to go to a black-owned business and spend $1,000, y'all would. Y'all would. And so, but we so interested in a black man tearing down another black man. Oh, man, that shit is demonic, bro. That shit is demonic. And so you trying to tear this man down. Let me see you go uplift your community, bro. Let me see you go. Let me see you go put five rappers on from your city. Fuck putting them on. Just let me see you go do five verses, free verses for people in your neighborhood. Let me see you go shout out five businesses in your neighborhood. We ain't going to see that, but we cheering you on tearing another nigga down. <laughs> oh, Kendrick, man, fuck them. Y'all, I'm unfollowing you. You said something about Kendrick. Man, come on, bro. Come on, my nigga. It is big money in tearing black men down. It is big money in tearing black men down. It's like y'all sit there and eat popcorn and clap as a black man getting tore down, bro. I just seen this white rapper on Facebook. I had to block him. And I blocked the person who shared the video. Came out dissing all the black rappers. A white guy. Oh, he named about 20 black rappers and all the black people in the car. Oh, I feel you. I feel you. White boys in the car. I feel you. I feel you. Why you ain't mention Machine Gun Kelly or Eminem? Why you ain't mention no other white rappers? Like, it's like big business in a plot to tear black men down. Goodness gracious. I ain't say nothing about this man not giving back. I said go do five verses from people from your city and uh, expose black-owned businesses in your community. We don't even know if the shit true. Man, this girl going crazy about Kendrick Lamar. Boy, I tell you, boy, you niggas hero worship more than I ain't never seen nothing like this. 
That man will piss on your face and tell you it's raining and you will believe that shit. But anyway, let me get off of that. I don't, I don't, I don't want to go back and forth with y'all about that. Did y'all y'all get the point I was trying to make? Like, do y'all get the point I was trying to make? It ain't had nothing to do with me trying to diss the guy. It's just like we take him out. Oh. Thank you for getting the point. I don't know what the fuck she is talking about, bro. I wasn't even talking about just. I don't talk about both sides. Like, I, it ain't had nothing to do with me taking sides. I'm saying, like, they're both trying to destroy each other. Career. Like, how don't people get that, bro? I, I don't get how people don't get that. I don't get how y'all don't see nothing wrong with 1090 Jake, like, just made a million dollars off of only tearing black people down. Like, I don't get how the two biggest rappers in the world is being applauded by tearing trying to tear another man's career down man go to your neighborhood bro and shout out five black businesses in your neighborhood bro go put on five rappers from your city that's all i'm saying bro that's all i'm saying what the like but you man that's all i'm saying you don't know if he didn't do it we didn't know if he jumped man I think we'd be so deep for no reason. We'd be so deep for no reason. So deep for no reason. One thing I learned, bro, I'm dead serious, man. The truth always be simple. And when motherfuckers want to lie and manipulate you, they make stuff complicated. Like, what is you even talking that don't even make sense. What are they talking so all this book? Yeah, you like like the truth be simple as hell, bro. Truth, truth be simple a lot of times, man. But I just don't like how we applaud that, man. Like, like for real, we be so entertained by the destruction of black men. Like, we, it's big business in it. And for me, it like, it is about race. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if this is offensive to any white person. But to have a white guy who tried to rap and it didn't work. Sit back and pray on black men. Nitpick their life. And expose them. And just do stuff to tear their career down. And you got rich off of it. And you just turned black people against other black people. These guys made it out the slums. Watched all their dreams come true. Just to have a white guy sit back nitpick tear you down watch you go broke and he get rich off of it that just bother my spirit bro even a black man doing that to somebody bother my spirit but the fact that a white guy doing it it just remind me too much of slavery it just remind me too much of slavery it does bro it just remind me of the slaveholders who divide the slaves and turn this dark slave against the light slave it just it just remind me of that and it irks my soul and to see a black person get up there and say shit like defending that i i, I and i don't even block people i have to block you for that because you ain't even my type you shouldn't be watching me anyway like you shouldn't be watching me anyway man to justify that shit and you Dick Ryan, Kendrick, and Drake so hard when I come up with something like they really trying to tear each other's career down, right? Which is entertaining. It's entertainment. Niggas love to watch niggas tear other niggas down. But what I'm saying is, like, we putting it good against evil. Let's, okay, you tearing each other down. If one of y'all win and kill somebody's career, good job. Whatever. whoop de do. Y'all like y'all like it, I love it. But what I'm saying in the midst of that, bro, okay, you tore somebody down, right? Uplift something. Go to your city and go do five free features for to somebody from Compton. And you know for a fact if you jump on their son, you created five new millionaires. Go to five black businesses in Compton and go buy something. And shout out their business. That's all I'm saying. What's so hard about that? Where is I'm hating on Kendrick Lamar at? Like, goodness gracious. Like, damn, he could rap. I never, like, he could rap.
I got a lot of topics to talk about. I don't even think I'm going to make it to that, man. That shit bothered me. That girl comments, that shit right there. Just missed the whole point, bro. Like, some people are so deep that they stupid. Just be so deep that they dumb. Like, be so deep that just lack common, simple sense, bro. Always so thin-skinned and touchy that it lack common sense. Deep people make me sick, bro, for real. I think deep people is a bigger distraction than criminals, bro. I'm dead serious, man. Over deep for no reason. So I, I was having a debate. This, well, we was having a talk early, bro. Healing, right? And so um, I'm not deep. I'm not deep. You are a deep thinker, right? No, I'm not deep. What do I say deep? I don't say everything. I say it's simple, bro. Everything I say is simple, right? I'm not deep at all. I don't say nothing deep. I don't think I'm deep at all. Everything is simple, right? I believe in God. And I uh, I believe in Jesus, right? Christ's word taught me. We reap everything we sow, right? Scripture taught us, as a man think of, so was he. I hate when people call, like, like, I, that. But anyway, right? Scripture teaches us we reap everything we sow, right? So everything we do is a seed that go into the spirit world. The spirit world, like our sowing and reaping in the spirit is like sowing, it's compared to farming, right? So, for example, right, as a farmer, I plant a seed. I bury the seed with dirt, water, whatever, give it sunlight, blah, 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 all the good stuff of farming. Something is going on under the ground that we can't see. It's developing roots. And whatever seed you plant, it will Grow that harvest. So if you plant a tomato seeds, you're going to get tomatoes. You're not going to get oranges. And that's like our spirit life. So our thoughts are like seeds that go in the spirit world. And we can't see the spirit world. And they grow roots. And they manifest in our life. That's why Christ said, as a man thinketh, so is he. So if I know I'm thinking about this thing over, over, and over, I'm going to attract that to my life. I know if I speak this over and over and over, I'm going to track that to my life. I know if I do this over and over and over, I'm going to track that to my life. Because scripture teaches if you give it, we'll be given to you. A lot of times we don't believe that because the person we gave to ain't going to give us nothing, bro. And it, and, and it ain't going to come at a time we expect it. Like, so I don't believe it. I ain't giving nobody shit. I gave that nigga. He ain't gave me nothing. But it don't work like that. As um. And so if you being a blessing to people, you giving, you being a blessing, you sowing seeds into the spirit world. And pretty soon you ever expect like you, you need a help and out the blue, somebody helped you when you least suspected who you least suspected from. That means you sow good seeds you gave to somebody, bro, for real. And so everything we do is a seed. Our thoughts, our words are seeds. And so. I believe we reap what we sow. If we do fuck shit, we gonna get fucked. That's not deep. That's not deep. That's not deep. Like that's just like spiritual principle. We reap everything we sow. And so deep to me is this is deep. This is what deep niggas think, right? I'm gonna get some uh sage and I'm gonna burn like like uh or I'm gonna I'm gonna touch crystals and shit and and I'm gonna heal like that. And to me, that's equivalent of smoking weed or doing powder or doing whatever and, and, and escape from your problems like temporary. But that shit going to be right there. I believe real healing. Man, Jesus said, Jesus washed feet to show the disciples we are here to serve, right? And so what bring pain our heart is what God has qualified us to heal. So if I go through something traumatic that changed my life and I can't heal from it. So a lot of times we have to understand like we have to accept it and embrace this happen. And then really believe that whatever the devil meant for us, our harm, God would use it for good and be a blessing not only to our life, but people. So say that I went through something crazy, right? 
it's going to be somebody else who go through that. So I learned the lessons in that. And so now I could teach people, you know what I'm saying, and, and help other people. And that's how we heal, by helping another person with the same thing we went through. And so us helping somebody, like if I was a victim of some shit, right? And I use that experience to help other people get through it. That's how I heal myself. That script, that's why Jesus showed, that's why Jesus washed the disciples' feet to let them know we are here to serve. And when we serve other people, that's how we heal. That ain't deep. That ain't deep. I don't think that's deep. That shit is simple. Deep is, I go through all this traumatic shit and I'm going to touch a fucking crystal and it's going to heal me. That's some deep nigga shit, bro. For real. I ain't deep. I ain't deep. And so I don't try to be deep. I'm not, uh, oh, I ain't yelling at you. But, um, yeah, I ain't no deep nigga, bro. Y'all don't see me on this motherfucker. I don't say good morning because I'm not born anything. Grand Rising or I don't say dreadlocks. I say lot. That's deep nigga shit, bro. I ain't deep. I ain't fucking deep. I like saying good morning for real. Like, I celebrate holidays, even though I know they bullshit holidays, but I done laid on my deathbed, bro. I done took bullets. I got all these holes in me and shit. I got open right here, been stabbed all in the chest and stomach and shit like that. So I done been through it, and I on land on my deathbed, man. I understood, man. You know, um, today is a gift. And so I'm going to celebrate everything with my son and make the most out of every moment. I ain't do, I ain't celebrating that pagan holiday. I don't give a fuck if it ain't. no. It is a pagan holiday. I do other sin anyway. So, like, we pick and choose. I'm like, I don't care about all that deep ass shit. I ain't deep. I ain't. I don't even like deep people. Motherfucker come around me talk. I'm trying to be deep, man. Get away from me. I guarantee you, man. So I've been shot. I've been stabbed all up, right? Laid on my deathbed, right? All my friends been shot. Um, like, okay, so on Belmont Avenue, it's probably 50 of us kids hanging together, five years old. Probably 30 of them dead already, like been killed. And the rest doing life in prison. So I got a couple friends left. I guarantee you, all my friends who left been shot in the head, stabbed, been, man, all that deep shit, bro. Man, un we understand that life is very short, bro. And sometimes you got to cherish those moments for real. And I used to not cherish those moments being deep before I started getting shot up and stabbed. I ain't shut up in that white man holiday. But then I understand my family is off of work at this time. It's the Christmas spirit, all that, all that shit. And I'm just making the most out of the moment, not being so deep, bro. Because when you die, you not going when you lay on your deathbed, you ain't gonna think about think about none of that deep ass shit. You're gonna think about moments. You're gonna think about moments in your life. And I don't wanna miss no moments in my life being deep. For real. Because I don't eat this, I don't celebrate it. It ain't in the Bible. But we'll sit there and fuck and not marry. You feel what I'm saying? So we pick and choose and like, are oh, you celebrating Easter and go home and fuck and not marry? You feel what I'm saying? So we pick and choose. All, like, I do so much wrong. You think I'm about to pick? Like, and then nitpick your sin? No. No, I can't do that. Man. But I can't believe y'all acted like that about Kendrick Lamar and Drake. I can't. I just can't believe that. I can't believe grown adults, forty year old motherfuckers, bro. Like I can't believe that that y'all idolizing people. I can't believe that y'all idolize people. I just, as a kid, I get it, bro. My son loves Steph Curry, and I ain't gonna tell him nothing bad about Steph Curry because I want him to admire Steph Curry. Cause my son like dribbling, and it, it like like I would love for him to play basketball like that. It make him work harder playing dribble. But grown motherfuckers, bro, are you serious, man? I can't believe it. y'all went crazy like that yesterday. I can't believe it. I delete that video. Not because I've been called worse. I mean, I've been called the worst shit you could be possibly called. So, uh. So the insults ain't bothering me. It's just the fact that I know my purpose. 
You know, I know my purpose. And my purpose ain't to go back and forth talking about no other rapper. You know, my purpose is to be in these neighborhoods making uh, it's changing lives, bro, and uh, installing that we need to lead with love and respect to these young kids in these slums and these war zones and teaching these other teaching these kids we reap everything we sow. Teaching these kids like you know what I'm saying, that's that's what I'm here for, man. Not to argue about no fucking rap debate. <laughs> for real. Not to argue about no rap debate. Man. Even like uh I ain't poke, I ain't, cause I don't get into politics shit. But I told him I ain't vote for Joe Biden. Motherfucker, almost bl- that's a sellout. Are you black and ain't gonna vote for Joe Biden? Man, fuck Joe Biden. Like, y'all niggas hero worship. I'm not man. Look, let me tell y'all something, bro. I don't I don't know nothing about politics, and so I would never say who to vote for. I don't know who the fuck to vote for. I don't know who running none of that shit. I know I ain't vote for Joe Biden. I ain't vote for him. The man. Took Resurrection Sunday and made it a transgender holiday. I ain't knocking you making the transgender holiday. I mean, I feel a certain way about it, but who? Hey, you know, to each his own. Those without can sin cast the first stone, right? I got my own sins, my own flaws. But the fact that you did it on Resurrection Sunday, which is a spiritual holiday, which is a religious holiday, which is a Christian holiday, it's like you're trying to offset that with the tranny stuff. And I said, that's wrong, man. That's demonic, bro. That's demonic. I'm not a Muslim, but I'm not going to celebrate a fucking transgender holiday in Ramadan. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just purposely put it on a Muslim holiday or a Buddhist holiday. I just think that shit was so satanic, bro. I just think that shit was so satanic. So, I mean, y'all can be pro-black all y'all want, bro, and talking about all that, man. But if we say we put God first, for real, like, nah, let's be serious. I don't always put God first. Sometimes I be forgetting to. (laughs) But when I think about it, I do. (laughs) Gotta realize, man, I've been a a motherfucker hanging on the corner my whole life. So, my walk is new. But... How can I say I actually put God first if I would let politics let me vote for a man who made who took Resurrection Sunday and made it into a transgender holiday? Clearly, that's antichrist. Like you could have made that any other day out the year, but you purposely did that. That is some anti whether you believe in Jesus or not, bro. I mean, like you should respect other people's faith because I can't knock nothing. If Muhammad make you a better person, bro, if that make you treat people the way you want to be treated, lead with love and respect and go by the gold, because every faith had the same golden rule, doing to others as you won't done to you, right? So if Buddha make you a better person, right, and y'all have a, I don't know nothing about Buddhists, but it's a Buddhist holiday, and Joe Biden Put a transgender holiday on the same day as a Buddhist holiday or a Muslim holiday. Like all this fucking spare time where there's no holidays, spare days. You choose to put it on a Christian holiday, bro. Man, fuck Joe Biden, bro. I would never vote for Joe Biden. Like that is so disrespectful. And I know, I know all. I, and then you know, I got attacked by women, bro. I, that bro, I ain't gonna lie. That broke my heart when black women was attacking me. I, like when Joe Biden gave that transgender woman of the year, I said I feel disrespect. I feel bad for women, bro. And women was like on a, on his side. I said, man, that shit broke my heart. Like I expected like white women to agree with Joe Biden, but to see so many black women like fuck yo, the trans is a woman. She deserved woman of the year. I said, man, y'all some fucking weirdos, bro. Are you kidding me? Women got to carry babies and it's women getting overpowered and raped and snatched in vans and shit. These buster ass niggas leaving women to raise their kid by themselves. So the women got to sit there and work 10 hours a day, come home, babe this kid, cook for this kid, clean up after this kid, discipline this kid. Got to take man duties and the woman duties. I know it's hard because I do it. I'm a single dad. So I do this hard-ass work and still come bathe and do all that shit with my son. And so 
You go give a fucking man, bro? A woman of the year who still got a dick? Man, I thought that was so... I was done with him then. I said, I'm not voting for that weird old guy then. And for women to attack me about that, man, that, that hurt my... That broke my heart for it. I ain't gonna lie. I was sorry about that shit. And so, man, ain't no way I could say I believe in God and vote for that. I don't give a fuck if he gave us $10 million a piece, bro. Like, man... Fuck that dude. I don't know who he running against. Who I don't know politics, but I I don't I vote for Kanye West before. <laughs> I vote. For, I don't give a fuck who running against Joe Biden. I'm going for that motherfucker, man. That shit, man. Come on, bro, man. Come on, man. Come on, bro. Like you playing? Like you just like you disrespect? That's disrespectful, bro. You give a transgender holiday. And you put it on Resurrection Sunday. Man, that's disrespectful, man. You disrespected women to me, man. You go give a man who tucked his dick behind him and gave him woman of the year. All these women out here, bro, you can't think of one woman. I ain't vote for that guy, bro. I don't know what kind. I don't know probably. I'll vote for you. If you run for president, I'll vote for you over Joe Biden. Is my fucking maid, man? So, okay, I had this conversation yesterday, so I gotta ask y'all something. Have you ever heard that phrase "new level, new devil"? Please, can y'all say yes or no? Because if y'all don't say yes or no, I ain't even gonna talk about it. Because I'm kind of talked out right now. I, have y'all ever heard the phrase new level, new devil? Can I get a yes or no? Yes, that's one yes. I mean, if y'all don't answer, cause I'm tired anyway, so I just like I've been on here too long anyway. Okay, yes, yes, new level, new devil. All right. That is a powerful statement right new level new devil like we don't know understand how powerful that is but that's some real shit bro i was having a conversation with somebody right and it's talking about they uh living with somebody who's very difficult right and how they just want to leave and like what but anyway right i believe new level new devil we had to compare it to school we got to compare life experiences like school right this is how i take new level new devil right so say that you're in school, you got to pass certain tests at this level to make it to the next level in school, right? It's like life. To make it to the next level of our life, whether it's spiritual maturity or just maturity, period, we got to pass certain tests on the level we had to get to that level. And we pass tests by going through certain problems. And usually the problems be caused by people. And usually by people we work with, people in our family, people we love, whatever. And so people be a test. People test us, right? So say that you at a job or in a household or with somebody and they know what button to push every single time to make you go off, lose your cool or steal your peace. Because people do that. People do that. They see a smile on your face and they're going to do anything to wipe that motherfucker off, bro. It's people like that, right? And so if that person know what button to push to make you go out and cuss them out or that's what they want. You failed that test. You failed that test because you ain't matured enough where that little bullshit ain't bother you. Or you end up just leaving or quitting your job because of that person. You still haven't passed that test. So you can leave. You're going to deal with another motherfucker just like that because you're going to take that test over. But the moment you grow and mature in your spirit. And that little shit don't bother you no more. What they doing like, man, that shit don't even bother me no more. Because you understand it's a test. You move to another level of your life. And when you get to that next level, because now you mature from that level. Just like if you went from the second grade and passed the test, you got to the third grade. The third grade going to be harder. And you pass that test with that person, it's going to be a worse person. It's going to be worse circumstances. And you're going to have to pass that test. And if you fail that test, you're going to take it again. If you run from that, you're going to take it again. And so we go levels and levels our whole life to mature. But if you keep running, keep failing that test, 
you would be a 60-year-old fucking immature 13-year-old in the head because you didn't pass those tests. And that's when you see an old motherfucker who never grew up. He ran from the test or he never passed the test. That's new level, new devil. And I compare it to the weight room, right? Say that you go trying to lift 100 pounds, right? And you need a spotter. You can't even get it up. Oh, shit. It's heavy. So you got the spotter. You do it about a couple times. You sore as hell the next day, right? So you go again. You get did it more. You go again. You go again. That weight didn't change. You got stronger. You got stronger. The weight don't change. If you just keep going and don't quit, you looking up like that weight never changed. And that's like our problems and people, man. People don't change a lot of times. Our problems don't change. We just get stronger. And so that's what new level, new devil mean to me. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah. Y'all, y'all, y'all agree with that though? But that's what that mean to me. But how long I've been on here? Okay, I said I was going to be on here for 30 minutes. All right, so I'm about to be up out of here. Okay, you agree with that. All right. And so this is Facebook. No, this is this Instagram and it's Facebook. And so if y'all missed this video, I'm going to upload it to YouTube so y'all can see it on YouTube. But, um, okay, y'all feel that message. But, yeah, but, um, but I, I feel that stuff is, uh, man, that's divisive to me, man. That's super divisive, bro. But I'm up out of here, man. I appreciate everybody who tuned in. And like I always say, man, lead with love and respect. And if y'all have any, uh, if y'all know any people who do nonprofits or community work, man, inbox me and we'll go get them a helping hand. Uh, and so, man, I appreciate everybody who took the time to tune in. One love, man. Lead with love and respect. We ain't got to like each other. We ain't got to agree with each other. But we could disagree respectfully. We could not like each other respectfully. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got a name called none of that shit, man. But I'm up out of here. One love. Prophet Mahmoud representing all the cast offs worldwide. And if y'all don't know what a cast off is, cast off is being who you are even when it's unpopular. I'm out. One love.